My husband had a really bad headache, so I decided to take my daughters for a walk to the pharmacy to get him some medication. On our way there, there was a dog who was barking and lunging at us, but we didn't worry about it because he was on a chain. On our way back, the same dog was barking and lunging at us, but this time the chain snapped. I saw a big black mass moving fast towards us in my peripheral, and I just picked up my daughters and ran. My twins are both five, and that's like 40 pounds each, but adrenaline strength is real. The dog was right behind me, and my daughter on my left was slipping, and I didn't want her to fall and get bitten. We were passing a house with a fence, and I kind of tossed her over the fence into the lawn and kept running with my other daughter. I was screaming for help when someone came over and scared the dog away. I ran to find my other daughter to find she was unhurt, but she was crying and saying I left her, and why couldn't I have thrown her other sister instead? We got home, and my daughter ran to my husband crying, Mommy threw me over the fence. After telling him what happens, I thought he would understand, but he started saying things like, What if she got hurt? What if she fell on some glass and cut herself? What if the dog stopped chasing you and jumped over the fence at her? I was already guilty, and I was like, okay, sorry, I get it. But he kept going, so I finally snapped. He wasn't there, so it's easy for him to say what I should have done. I did it to save I grew up in a very warm and loving environment, but from what I was told, I was lucky. My sister and I had two drug addict parents who never took care of us. When my mom was pregnant with me, she smoked and got drunk pretty often, and when I was born, my sister was the only one who took care of me. When I was two months old, they left us both in a mall and left, and we never saw them again. An old couple found us and contacted the police and eventually decided to adopt us. Today I'm 19 and my sister is 34. We're really close, but I still live with my adopted family and she lives about 20 minutes away. So a couple of months ago, a friend and I took a DNA test and that's how I found out I have an aunt in the system. I immediately reached out to her and we agreed to meet in person, all without telling my sister a thing. We tried to figure things out, so I asked her if she has a brother or sister and she told me that when she was 13, her older sister got pregnant while being drunk with her junkie boyfriend and a month after giving birth, she ran away with the baby after some pretty intensive fights with their parents. They never found her but stopped looking after a year and a half. When I saw the picture, I knew it was my sister 100%. My sister is my mom. We were never abandoned. She fabricated this entire thing to my adoptive family. And my boyfriend is really into cars. Recently discovered a charity project where they fix up an old Jaguar and it's worth around $300,000. You could buy a $50 raffle ticket to win the car and the money went towards a good cause. My boyfriend is broke at the moment so I offered to go halves with the ticket. He didn't want to because then the car wouldn't be his completely. I wasn't too worried about it and didn't mention it again. I did, however, buy a ticket for myself. Well, I won, and on the first of next month, I will be the owner of the car. My boyfriend found out he was really excited until I told him I was going to sell the car and put half of the money in my savings and invest the other half. He said I can't sell our car without consulting him. I told him it's my car and I can do whatever I want. He now claims it was all a big misunderstanding and apparently wanted to go halves but hasn't got around to giving me the money yet. I call BS on it, but he keeps saying that we're a couple and we should make this decision together. I still am planning on going ahead and selling the car and keeping the money to myself. I do see a future with him, but it was my money and my ticket. Am I the asshole for not wanting to go 50-50 and keeping the money all towards myself? Story time of how I found out that I was dating my own brother. Yes, biological brother, same mom, same dad. So a little background information, my mom passed away when I was two, my dad is currently in jail, and I live with my grandma. So at the time, I was 14, about to be 15, he was 17, about to be 18. So how this all started is one day I was at the baseball game with my friends and he happened to be there. I was fangirling over this boy. Like, I saw him and I was like, I'm, I'm going to marry him one day. I was feeling a little bold, so I went over and got his snap. And then I figured out that he had the same last name as me and I was like, dude, that is dope. My exact words were, now I don't have to change my last name when we get married. So we hung out the rest of the baseball game and I was starting to fall in love with this kid. Like his smile, his laugh, I talked about him to my friends the rest of the night. And me and him started snapping for a while. So we started to hang out a lot. We may have hooked up a couple times. But I had to keep this all a secret from my grandma because she forbid it I dated somebody. So fast forward a couple weeks, we start dating. Months and months and months go by. Our nine months come and I finally tell my grandma. And this is where it gets bad. I'm running out of time like for part two. If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. Two boys picked up a girl on the side of the road while they were on their way to a school dance. In the car, she kept saying that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. But when the night ended and they were about to drop her off, the girl accidentally left with the jacket. So the boys said that they would just come back the next day to get it. But when they came back and knocked on her door, they discovered something that would make them question what is real and what isn't. An old woman opened the door and asked them who they were looking for. After talking to her for a while, it was revealed that the girl they found on the side of the road was her daughter but the thing is she had been dead for 12 years she was killed in a car accident at the same street corner they first saw her the old woman pointed to a cemetery down the road and said that's where we buried her the boys didn't believe her at first they'd spent the whole night with this girl so they knew that she had to be real but they went to the cemetery and saw the boy's jacket draped over a gravestone and on the gravestone was the girl's name and the date of her death exactly 12 years ago to the day okay back to the uber story our parents are freaking out, we're freaking out, we're texting each other in our group chat so he doesn't hear us. 
Also, while this is all happening, he wasn't talking to us, but he had an earbud in and he was talking to someone on the phone really quietly. It was super creepy. My mom starts calling me again and he hears the ring. And one of my friends pulled up on her phone the directions to get home, which he also heard. So he knew that we thought something was off. After a little while longer, we finally know where we are, so we feel a little bit better. We were getting really close to the turn that goes into my friend's neighborhood, and we were thinking, if he doesn't make this turn, we're screwed. Thank goodness he makes a turn, and we're back at my friend's house. But the scary thing is, is what if he was planning something, but since our phones were ringing and we had the GPS up, that he changed his mind? Because we were not going home. I still can't stop thinking about it. This is the one time Life360 has come in handy. We're all safe now. Story time. So this one day I needed to go to Walmart and usually my boyfriend goes with me to the store, but I had made him mad at the same Walmart like two days ago. <laughs> and he was asleep too, so I just decided to go by myself. So while I'm there, I go to the candy aisle and there's two women standing there, but they left, so I was alone in the aisle. As I'm standing there, there's this guy with a scooter who walks into the same aisle and he looks like the Walmart version of Tyler the Creator. <laughs> and... I see that he's staring at me, but he's not staring at my face. He's staring at the lower half of me. So in my head, I'm like, oh, do I have something on me? Like, does he think my outfit is ugly? So he passes me, and I just hear him say, can you show me your feet? And I just say, no, what the hell? And he just shrugs and walks away. So I start texting my boyfriend and tell him what happened, but then I see him pass the end of the aisle, and he's just staring at my feet, and then he walks away. I had slippers and socks on that day, so there was no way he could see my feet. But he seemed really comfortable asking me, so I wonder how many other people he's asked that before, or like, in the store. And even if I was down to show him my feet, I would have charged him. Like, who just shows feet for free? Here's a story time of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. So my mom and her boyfriend were just going to go out and have a night to themselves. And I was home watching my two little sisters. At the time, I was 13. My two little sisters were 9 and 6. So around 6 p.m., my mom and her boyfriend leave. Me and my sisters just sit down and watch a movie, and then I get up to make them dinner. I get paranoid really easily, and while I was making them dinner, I look out the kitchen window, and I thought I seen somebody in the backyard. I text my mom and she gets on the cameras that are outside and she said nobody was out there. I continue making them dinner, we sit down and eat, and then we start watching another movie. Then we start hearing knocking. It wasn't coming from any of the doors, it was coming from the side of the house. I didn't want to bother my mom on her one night out, so I just took the kids and we went upstairs and watched a movie in my room. My six-year-old sister at the time went to the bathroom and she came back in literal tears. She was literally crying so hard until I finally got her to stop and tell me what was wrong. She said as she was walking back from the bathroom, she seen somebody downstairs. I quietly locked my door and I put my sisters in the closet and I call my mom right away. I'm running out of time, like for part two. My boyfriend showed up to my house randomly one day. I had just woken up and I got ready so fast in my room. Mom told him that he could wait in the living room. She ended up jumping in the shower. I went outside to the living room and we ended up going to his house. When I was there, my mom called me. She said that there was $350 on the table and that one fifty dollars bill was missing. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but I had to find out the truth. So I told him to take me to Jack in the Box. We went through the drive-thru. I was so mad, but I had to keep it together. I knew that he only paid with 20s. He never paid with 50s. I ordered my food, and I was waiting to see what bill he pulled out. And guess what, guys? It was a $50 bill. Then I looked at him and told him, don't pay with my mom's money. I grabbed my purse, pulled out a 20, and told him, pay with my money. His eyes just popped open. He knew he got caught. I was a product of an affair between my mom and dad. My mom was already married and had a one-year-old daughter. She wanted to abort me, but my dad begged her and paid her a hefty sum. She signed over all rights and I didn't see her for my 14 years of life. She recently contacted my dad saying she wanted to get to know me better, and he said it's entirely up to me. I was skeptical, but decided to meet her. I've been talking to my mom's side for about two months when at a family gathering, they all sat me down and said the reason they contacted me was because my half-sister was having kidney failure and was basically dying. At a loss for words, I got up and left. I told my dad and he said it's entirely up to me, but I should get tested just to see before I make my decision. So I did. When my mom found out, she thought this was me agreeing and told everyone the good news. I did a lot of thinking and I decided I would not be donating my kidney. This family had done nothing for me. The only reason they tried to get in contact was for my kidney. So I don't want anything to do with them. I got loads of hateful calls and messages, but decided to stand by my decision. My stepsister called me and said I'm a douche for giving her false hope. People are saying I'm wrong because I can save a life. My stepsister did nothing wrong. But I feel so used. Am I the asshole for not giving my sister my kidney?